Helen Golay and Olga Rutterschmidt are not your typical murder suspects. The two seemingly sweet 70-year-olds are actually scheming con artists, but police suspect that their game has turned deadly. In 1997, the Hollywood Presbyterian had a large program drawing hundreds of homeless people each week. The relationship between Helen and Olga was complex. Uh, they'd met each other back in the 80s, and they'd been small-time con artists together. Helen Louise Salisbury Golay was born in Eastland County, Texas, in 1931. We don't know much at all about her mother, but we know that her father died very suddenly in a car accident. For most of her early childhood, Helen was raised by her maternal grandfather. When he died, she was sent to Hoquiam, Washington to live with a cousin. Helen grew up in a family that was rather disconnected. In psychology, we know that our childhood has a significant impact on how we conduct our later life. We are imprinted by the experiences of our earliest time. After graduating high school, in the 80s and 90s, there was a rent control crisis, and the owners of the apartment buildings were having trouble keeping their apartment buildings uh, up to code, uh, making repairs, necessary repairs or upgrades, because they couldn't raise the rents enough to earn a living on them. So many apartment owners were leaving them vacant. Snooping on her tenants, hoping to catch them at something. In many ways, she was just a simple bully. She thought she was entitled to anything she wanted. If she wanted it, she went for it. If you didn't give it to her, she'd find a way to sue you for it. She saw this as an easy way to make money, but I think more importantly, she saw it as yet another way that she could bully and manipulate people. Olga Rutterschmidt was born a world away in Hungary in 1933. She grew up in a community that was torn by the war. She was in Hungary, times were desperate, and you had to be clever and cunning to survive. You had to manipulate to get what you needed and what you wanted. And that laid down her character for the rest of her life. When Helen and Olga met for the first time at a health club, they were both in their mid-50s, attractive, and dedicated to looking good. Helen was the leader of the two. Olga had more of a desperate quality. They realized they had a lot in common, a shared ambition to make easy money. They set out to charm and deceive. Helen was very sweet and she had this beautiful Texas drawl that I'm sure just made men crazy. Olga had the European accent and that was also very exotic. They knew the power of being attractive. They were both very smart. And in this way, they exploited probably every man they came into contact with. They were posing as wealthy women of expensive hotels and taking advantage of men, flirting, attracting themselves to them, and then robbing them. Stealing money, stealing credit cards. Men would be horribly ashamed of this, and they wouldn't want to report it. So we don't know how much they got away with. They in some ways represent a man's worst nightmare. The woman who's beautiful, who's attractive, who's exotic, and takes full advantage. This time, their targets would be men down on their luck and in need of a helping hand. My name is Olga. Did I already say that? Yes. Olga. The volunteering was just a cover. It wouldn't be hard to find a man who wanted some attention, who needed some attention. And if they could get their attention with a smile, that European accent, that Texas drawl, it wouldn't be hard at all to ask the questions necessary to find out whether this was a man who fit their profile. They needed someone who didn't have much family or perhaps wasn't from this area because they didn't want family members poking around asking questions. It takes a very bold person to be able to kill somebody, wait a prescribed amount of time, and then walk into the police station and claim to miss the person that they've killed. These women planned this crime to the nth degree. 
Every detail was planned out. And what that served to do psychologically was to bind up their anxiety. They weren't worried about getting caught because they thought they'd worked out every single angle. Soon the checks began to arrive. Their plan had proved a complete success. The women received in total $600,000 from the insurance companies. But it wasn't long before both women were itching to make another score together. This time, they were determined to improve on their plan and make even more money. They had every reason to think they could get away with it because they've gotten away with so much in the past. There's a term we use in psychology called cognitive dissonance. And this cognitive dissonance is triggered when the image we see doesn't match the story we know. So we see little old ladies and we imagine sweet, gentle, kind. But the story we hear is just horrifying because it so doesn't match what we expect. Six years after Paul Vado's death, Kenneth McDavid is found dead in a Hollywood back alley. Helen and Olga used the hit and run because it was safe for them. They didn't have to, literally didn't have to get dirty. All they had to do was drive away. On May 18, 2006, police arrest Helen and Olga on fraud charges. Part of the, the psychological structure of both Helen and Olga was that they thought they could get away with all of this. Authorities finally catch up with Helen Golay and Olga Rutterschmidt in 2006 after a 20-year crime spree. The grandmotherly grifters are prime suspects in the murders of two homeless men. Why did you make all the and extra insurances? There's a limit. You can do that many. I know You were greedy. That's the problem. No, we're gonna go to jail. They're gonna lock you. Be quiet. They could be. We have to. Helen says to 